More severe weather is heading for the United Kingdom, particularly on Friday and into the weekend. I'm going to be joined by Chief Meteorologist Steve Ramsdale in just a moment to talk about some of the potential impacts. But let's just break down the warnings first of all, deal with the rain initially, the rain warning in force covering large parts of the UK during Friday. But actually that rain is uh, starting to come in during Thursday evening, spreading in across the southwest. If we run through the sequence, you can see this band of rain tracks northwards, uh, probably only lasting for an hour or so in some areas. But look at the colors on there, the bright colors showing some really intense rain as that band moves north. And it's followed then by lots of showers. And again, some of those showers are likely to be very heavy indeed. So some places are going to see quite a bit of rain during Friday. So that's the rainfall warning. Let's move on now and talk about the winds because actually the winds will start to pick up in the southwest uh, later on on Friday. But the rain, the wind warning really kicks in uh, through Friday night and into Saturday as this area of low pressure moves northwards and the isobars start to squeeze together. So the winds really picking up initially in the southwest. But during Saturday, strong winds likely across the bulk of England and Wales. And then the next warning is for thunderstorms. And that's in this zone, close to the low pressure system, where the winds are lighter. And that's because that means the thunderstorms are likely to be slow moving. So we have a, another warning for thunderstorms covering large swathes of northern Britain because, as I say, they'll be slow moving the thunderstorms here. So they could drop a lot of rain just because of their slow moving nature. Meanwhile, across the south, we're going to see lots of blustery showers with the strength of the wind. So that's the warnings broken down. Let's talk a little bit more about the impacts. Let's bring uh, Steve on. Thanks for joining me, Steve. No You're a chief meteorologist. Yes. Uh, one, of your, one of the parts of your job is to issue these warnings. So let's talk about the rain warning first of all. Why do we have a rain warning in force uh, for Friday across the UK? Okay. As we've seen, we've got that band of rain pushing northwards and again followed by the showers on Friday. And with those, you could be seeing some quite large rainfall totals falling in quite a short period of time. With the frontal rainfall itself, we could be seeing sort of 10 to 15 mils quite widely falling along that band as it pushes northwards. But the more concerning aspect is where we could see 30 mils or so in only a few hours. That kind of level of rainfall can often overwhelm just local drainage systems, leading to you know, ponding of water or even some localised flooding as well, as well as that, at least some spray and standing water just elsewhere. So it means some difficult travel conditions. But with that level of rainfall, you could be seeing some localised flooding leading to disruption both on the roads, but also to people's homes and businesses as well. So yeah, as you mentioned, there, some of the impacts that those, those rainfall totals could bring. There's going to be a lot of surface water and spray on the roads, and that's yeah. going to have a big impact because it's Friday, it's the middle of August, there'll be a lot of people on the road. That's right, there's a lot of people travelling and you know, well we, we hope that summers are quite nice and dry and so when there's a lot of rain around sometimes it catches people out. But with that as well, again with it falling in such a short period of time that means conditions can change very quickly on the roads, particularly when you're talking about showers which are a bit hit and miss in places. So you could be that you're driving along quite a dry road, you know, quite happy really, and then suddenly you're in a very heavy shower, the road's suddenly becoming very wet, your visibility is reduced, it changes how you drive and it can lead to accidents and you know difficult driving conditions. Okay, so that's the rainfall warning. Now the, the wind warning across England and Wales, those gusts picking up on Friday night, but particularly during Saturday across a large chunk of England and Wales, those winds are gonna be unusually strong for the time of year. That's right, and it's very important to say for the time of year as you do. Um, we are looking at the potential for sort of 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts inland by day, uh, particularly on Saturday, but also very locally, sort of 60 miles an hour possible along coastlines as well. What that means is that that you know, during the winter, we might not be worried about that. People are used to that sort of uh, level of wind during the winter. It's what you kind of expect, you know, wet and windy weather. During the summer, and believe it or not, this is supposed to be peak summer, this sort of level of wind, people aren't necessarily prepared for. As you say, there's a lot of people traveling, but there's also children on holiday. There's a lot of people traveling to different parts of the country. A lot of people want to go on holiday. There's caravans, there's tents and things like that. And they are susceptible to those strong winds. There's also a lot of outdoor events as well. So there's a lot of outdoor and temporary structures being put up, which are not necessarily able to withstand levels of wind at that level. One of the really important messages to get across is, is the impacts. And it's one of the things you deal with as a chief meteorologist, because you issue these warnings based on impact. So as you said, in November, December, this kind of level of wind would not necessarily be causing the, the impacts that it's going to in August. So that's one of the reasons why we have a warning in force. That's right, yes. It's all about what the impact on people could be. As you say, in November, people we might have had a few events like this already. People are used to them. People are understanding. They might have put away the things that are going to blow around before that. But during August, when it hasn't been particularly windy recently, suddenly getting something like this means that people aren't prepared. They're not 
prepare to change their you know, way of driving, way of preparing for things. So it's important that we get that message out there to let people know it is going to be a pretty windy day. So it's a blustery day on Saturday, in particular across England and Wales. It does mean the showers across England and Wales move through quite quickly. But yes. the, the other aspect then, those thunderstorms, possibly across parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, the winds there are that much lighter, which means the storms are slow moving, so they could drop a lot of rain. That's right. And it's important there. It's a bit hit and miss with uh, thunderstorms where there's you know fairly slack flow. It it means that some areas will see very little rainfall. You could get away with a dry day if you're lucky. But where they do fall, that means you could see some large amounts of rainfall falling in a short period of time. And again, like with the uh, rainfall the day before, where that does happen, that means you could lead to some localised flooding and also difficult driving conditions. So again, it's important people are aware that that potential for some heavy rain in a short period of time, quite locally, is possible. Brilliant. Thanks for the summary of the warnings there, Steve. Now let's take a look at, at the bigger picture. Let, people are asking why. Yes. Why is this happening? So let's deal with the, the bigger picture and uh, maybe take a look at what's what's been developing out in the Atlantic over the past uh, sort of 12 or so hours. This is the satellite image. So here's the UK here. And it's this blob out in the Atlantic that's really been developing. And if we run through the sequence through last night, just in here, just talk us through that. That's right. You can see the cloud before. And you can see the way that this area of cloud is wrapping around and you get the sense that it's circulating around this area here and that's true that's what's happening that's where our low pressure area is you've got this cloud being wrapped in through here now this sort of cloud signature we see on the satellite pictures with this type of low is often indicative of a low that's at its almost at its lowest central pressure what we would call that is something going into its mature phase. That means that it's not likely to deepen anymore. The winds around it are not likely to get any worse. However, that system itself will be coming northeastwards towards the UK. So you can see the isobars around it well, representing let, those. Let's winds. show that. So here comes that low again, and it's moving up towards the UK. And if we just zoom in there, the isobars squeezing together, so really picking up across the southwest on Friday evening, and then those tightly packed isobars throughout much of the day across the south on Saturday. Yeah, that's right. So with that uh, level of wind strength across the UK, you've got pretty strong winds throughout uh, the atmosphere, really. And you can get those communicated down to the surface, particularly around the showers. What you often see in these sort of uh, events is that the strongest winds are around the coast or up over hills. That's partly because when they're coming in off the sea, for example, what we consider is the sea is a smoother surface. There's less friction between the air and the surface. Whereas in land, there's a bit more friction because what we call the roughness of the surface is a lot greater. So you tend to get less strong winds in land. However, in this situation, because there's potentially quite strong vertical motions associated with showers through the day, that means some of that higher, what we call momentum air, or stronger winds can be pulled down from just above the surface to give you those strong gusts in land. So the potential for some, the winds just suddenly whipping up all of a sudden. That's right. It's going to be an appreciably windy day, but particularly in and around showers, that's where you could see some very strong winds for a shorter period of time, but then back to sort of the standard windy day. Now, speaking of standards, we talked a little bit earlier about it. I mean, if, if you saw this weather chart in November or December, you just think, oh, that's quite a deep low. It'd just be a wet and windy weekend. But this is unusual for this time of year. Uh, how rare is it to get these kind of gusts in August? Well, we do often see one or two periods where we get the odd gust getting up to these sort of levels. But mostly, as I said before, it's around coast or it's over high ground in land. So the idea of getting that to low levels and quite widely in land across the UK is quite unusual. You can see stronger winds than this. If we go back to the 80s and early 90s, there were periods where you could see 60 mile an hour winds quite widely in land. We're not expecting anything quite up to that level, though there could be the odd 60 mile an hour gust through Saturday. But it is still going to be unseasonably windy. And again, given the idea that there's a lot of people traveling, there's a lot of events going on. That's why, considering the impacts of this, we feel it's necessary to have that warning out there. Brilliant. Fascinating stuff. Steve, thank you very much for joining me. I know it's a very busy day. Uh, please make sure you keep up to date with the very latest from the Met Office. And the easiest way to do that is to follow us on social media.